too easy. I know. Um, as Jim mentioned, we do have services throughout the week. We will have our first service midweek on Wednesday. All the services will be here since Trinity is closed this year yet. They will begin at 7 o'clock each evening. Wednesday night is the healing service. We, uh, the component of the healing service is we will invite all people at, at a time during that service to come forward, to be anointed with oil, and to receive some words of healing at the same time. We will pattern that just as we did at Ash Wednesday. We will ask people to socially distance as they come forward. The ushers will help with that as well. I have anointing oil that I will dip uh, swabs into, individual swabs, anoint the forehead just as we did at Ash Wednesday with the ashes. I will dispose of that and grab a new swab for the next person. So that is how we will do that. Monday, Thursday, uh, we have our service as normal. We will not have the foot washing component this year. Uh, we again are trying to make it as safe as possible. We will not be laying uh, on hands that day either for individual prayers. Uh, but we will have the uh, order of services we normally do, and we will also at the end strip the altar. However, it will be the assisting minister and I, and then we will ask uh, for two volunteers who may be here for that service to help us out. Once the altar is stripped, we will then proceed to the back, and then we will do the distribution of Holy Communion for everyone on the way out, as we have been doing every Sunday. And then on Good Friday, again, it will be the same type of service as we've had in the past. It is more of a quiet, subdued service. And at the very end, again, we will all leave in silence. So we will try and, and maintain that same semblance of, of what it truly means for us for that day. So we will be here every evening at 7 o'clock. And we invite everyone, invite your neighbors, your friends, uh, invite strangers. We have uh, extended to Abiding Hope the invitation as well, since they do not have a pastor right now, and we're asking what our services may be, so we may see some faces we do not have. So let us be as welcoming as we always are. With that being said, I don't think I have anything else because it has been a wild and crazy week as it is. Um, Kelly, our secretary, has been working nonstop between her and I trying to get these services together. What we normally do is pull last year's bulletins and we look at them and then we make changes as necessary. Last year we did not have Holy Week, so that complicated life. Um, so we've been putting it together. Last night at 9.30 she sent me a rough draft. Um, I sent my approvals back to her and she's already made the changes and is sending those bulletins to Vera so that she can get them ready for sending out with the, uh, with the services, which we will have videoed and sent those out as normal. I think that's all done for now. So we will uh, not be processing in as we normally do. I have made the executive decision that we will hand palms out as we came in this morning, even though our bulletin says we will not get them until we are on our way out. Uh, it is Palm Sunday after all, and I thought that it would be uh, a little bit nicer for us and more meaningful for us if we had those palms in our hands during the entirety of the service. So again, uh, don't pay attention to your bulletin, I never do. <laughs> With that being said, let us prepare ourselves for worship.
untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the full tie near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them that Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat upon it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. I have trusted in you, O Lord. 
I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading comes from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at that name is Jesus. Every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, beginning in the 15th chapter. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes of the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate himself was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they've asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had had to do him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it upon his head, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, saying, Aha, 
you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, yet he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sefechthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was indeed dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it up in that linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When I used to teach confirmation many, many years ago, most of these kids have grown up in fact, I've done weddings for them, I've done baptisms for a number of them as well as for their children. We used to do something where I would light a candle in the middle of us as we sat in a circle, and before we had our time of prayer, I would ask them, what has been your high for this week? And what has been your low for this week? And we all took turns sharing what would be the best time that we had this week, and that would also be the lowest part of the week. What was the worst thing that happened? And I think today we get to see the high and the low of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We hear about a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And everything is going extremely well for him. That from Sunday to Thursday, he is riding on a wave that is so unbelievably high that he gets to see everything. And everyone gets to see him. And of course, there's acclamations and people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And of course, we know that he rides not only through the gates, but he rides up to the temple itself, and he gets off at the temple. And that is where he will spend time during the course of this week. We remember that he will chase out the money changers, 
and of course all of the animals. He will try to teach the people about God's love for them and yet these people would not understand. And yet he will continue to do so. Not only will he do that, but even just before things go really bad, he will actually institute for us those things that we continue to do in the church today. That he raises up a new church for us. And he does so as he institutes what we know as the Holy Supper or the Eucharist. Where he takes the bread and the wine. And he tells everyone there, this is my body given for you. And this is the blood, the blood of the new covenant. It is for the forgiveness of the sins of all people. And he would tell his followers, do this in remembrance of me. But even before he institutes that, he does something totally amazing. He takes off his cloak and wraps it around his waist, and he washes the feet of his own disciples. That he was showing them, as he had always done through time, that he came to serve and not be served. He was setting an example for all who would come after him. And then he taught them. He gave them this mandate. The Latin mandatum is where we get Monday, Thursday from. It is when he told his disciples, as I have loved you, love one another. And that is where it began. But then after that, that's when it went downhill. Because that very night, he would be betrayed. He would be betrayed, and he would be dragged off. And during the course of the night, he would be questioned. He would be beaten. He would be spat upon. He would be mocked. He would be flogged. He would be beaten to an inch of his life. And then he would be put on a cross. It was the highest of times and the lowest of times. And yet, I can't help but to hear God's words of love for us. In fact, in our entry gospel this morning, let me read to you the first words that I read earlier. And listen if you can hear the same words of love in these words. When they were approaching Jerusalem, do you hear the love? Well, Ron, those words don't give us a whole lot. The word love never came into it, not for a moment. Where do you get love out of that? Well, all of the times that he had been together with his disciples, at least three or more times prior to this, when Jesus was with his disciples and all who would listen, he told them that he was going to go to Jerusalem and there he would be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes and there he would be beaten and there he would be crucified. Now, Peter, of course, didn't want this to happen. So Peter tried to get in the way of this and said, No, my Lord, this will never happen. And yet Jesus went towards Jerusalem anyway. You see, that's the love part. It is the love that Jesus had for God and the love that Jesus has for us. And that is why he went. You see, he knew that if he did not go... He would not be in obedience to the will of God. And since he loved God the Father, he wanted to honor and glorify God. And so he went to Jerusalem. And he went to Jerusalem for us because he loved us so much. Because he knows that if he did not, that he would not hang on that cross. And if he did not hang on that cross, he would then not pay the price for all of our sins. He would not be our sin offering. And therefore, we would spend eternity not with God, but forever banished from God. 
And so therefore, he began to enter the city. And he did so out of love for God and for you and I. For all who would come after him. He did it out of love. And that's why it should be no surprise that God asks us to do as he had done. To love us as he has loved us. That when we go out into the world, wherever God would have us go, whether it is in our homes, whether it is places where we work, where we play, whether it is in our neighbor's homes, whether it is out on the street, whether we're shopping, no matter where it is we are at, God simply says, go and do as I have done to you. God doesn't say to rise up in anger at your neighbor. He doesn't say to look at somebody and see the fault within them. He doesn't say to go and tear someone down. Rather, God says to go and love, build them up. See the goodness that is in them. Share with them my love that you have experienced. You know those folks that as Jesus came in, they were cutting down branches, but they also took their, it says, the coats off their back. Well, in reality it was they had cloaks, and these cloaks were basically blankets that were rolled up. Now you have to understand, it was probably the only blanket that they owned. That was their traveling companion, if you will. That because they had to walk everywhere, most of the time they couldn't get there all in one day. And so it's not uncommon that you would take this cloak off and that would be your covering for the night. That is what you slept under. That's what kept you warm. And I know a lot of folks don't think about this, but in the desert, in that area, you could go from 90 to 100 degrees at the daytime, and at nighttime hit below freezing. Then we have pictures from last year or the year before of snow falling in Jerusalem. It gets cold there. And that was their only protection, and they were willing to give that to God. They were willing to take the shirt off their back, if you will, and then place it before Jesus. I wonder if we would do the same. Would we be willing to risk some of our most important things for God? And yet, that is what they did. They believed, and so they did. Now, of course, that upset the Pharisees and the scribes, and they were telling Jesus, Hey, you tell us people to stop this nonsense. And Jesus looked at them and said, even if I told them so, these stones would rise up and proclaim the same. You see, Jesus was not going to silence his observers, all the disciples, all the people that were coming in. Because Jesus loved them, and Jesus looked at them with compassion, and Jesus knew what was going to happen. Just as he knew that there would be a cult tied in the next town waiting for him to send his disciples to fetch for him, Jesus knew what was in the heart of all the people. And he knew that some of those who were laying down those palms, who were saying, Hosanna to God in the highest, would also be the same people that would shout, crucify him. And yet he still came even for them. And thank God he did. Because sometimes we are no better or no worse than them. And because of his love for us, he knew that. He knew that those people that were there shouting, the Hosannas, were imperfect. They were going to betray him. They knew that at some point in their life they would turn away. And yet God still came. Because God and Jesus love. And he knew what kind of price he would have to pay, and he still came anyway. I don't know about you, but every time I think about that, I can't help but, but think of all that he went through. And to think that my God loves me so much 
that he was willing to pay a price so great for me and for you. And what do I do with that? How do I honor him? Do I honor him? Are all the things that I do in my life done so I might glorify him or do I do them to glorify myself? Do I not sometimes shout Hosanna at the top of my voice, maybe inside of a church, but maybe as I go out into the world, I don't even acknowledge him in prayer before a meal. That maybe I look upon strangers as those I'd rather avoid instead of seeing them as not only a friend I haven't met yet, but as maybe Christ himself walking among us. It gives me pause, and yet I thank God that even when I fall, He still loves me. He still rides in for me. He still gives His life up so that I might live, just as He does for each and every one of us. Now there are many who will not believe. They choose not to believe, and yet God still does it for them as well in hopes that one day they too will know what we know. And the only way that's going to happen is if we live our lives out faithfully, that we live our lives out in obedience to the will of God, that we live our lives out loving others and not tearing them down, that we go out into this world and when we see wrong, we stand with those who are oppressed, we stand with those who are downtrodden, we stand with those who are different from us, and we do so because we want to love. We want to love as God has loved us. And in doing so, we honor God. We don't seek to earn anything from Him because He has given us everything. He has paid that price with Himself. He died for us on that cross. And therefore, we are free to go in this world to love to lift up, to show others how God loves by the way that we love. It is a high and it is a low. And every day of our lives, we think about that. We reflect upon that. And we give thanks mm -hmm. for that. Let us go in the name of Christ to do as He calls us to do and be in this world. But let us do not so because we have to, because pastor says we should. But let us do so that we might thank God so that we might truly honor Him, not with our words of praise, but by our hands helping others, by reaching out, by offering a cold cup of water, by feeding the hungry, by visiting the sick and those in prison, by doing simply what Jesus did, humbly riding on the back of a colt, as he always did, willing to serve, not to be served. That is the king that I follow. That is the king that died on that cross for me and for you. Amen.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. To align on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from the pride and certainty that we always know you will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas afflicted by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of the world in all nations. Instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus, body and death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all those who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to conf confess Jesus as your son. We pray you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with the, excuse me, with the, to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your yeah, mercy is great. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those who are in need. We pray, Father, for healing and restoration. We pray for wholeness in mind, body, and spirit. We pray most of all, Father, that your presence may be known in the lives of all your children, that they may feel your arms wrapped around them, that they may know your healing touch, but most of all, Father, that they may know, as imperfect as we all are, you still love us, and you still call us your beloved. We lift up to you today, James, her, Harley, Richard, Heather, Stephanie, Bonnie, Patty, Greg, Lori, Cindy, Nick, Mary, Betty Sue, Norma, Eloise, Nicole, Kathy, Sandy, Amy, Fran, Hazel, Sue, Dick, Carl, Anita, Charlotte, 
Terry, Vera, Clara, Amber, Suzanne, Dustin, Shirley, Melanie, Mike, Diane, Marsha, Marilyn, Yvonne, Rob, Darlene, Elizabeth, Rosa, Betsy, Roy, Rich, Braden, Tim, Lindsay, Gia, Wanda, Rick, Patty, Jessica. We pray for all of those who are battling with addictions of any kind. We pray for them and their families, for restoration in you. That no matter what choices we all make in this life, Father, help all people know that there, are, there is forgiveness in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray especially for all of the first responders, for all of those who are serving in our military. We pray that you watch over them, keep them safe. Let their families know that you are with them and that one day soon we shall all be together again. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray together. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger, wherever we have. And now we us in the seal, and we may have sober from death to life, through Jesus Christ. Lift up your hearts. Give your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for our Savior Jesus Christ whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering who preach good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. <clears throat> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection and ascension. We await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food. 
this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, our Lord, 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 our Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Let us pray together. God of Christ's love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit. Let our lives bear witness to the love that is given us you in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing from God. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.